My Line. Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a wildly talented comedian who opens in Philadelphia November 12th at a place called Skioli's, everybody look out, Mr. Buddy Hackett. And now, a very nice lady who is a columnist on the New York Journal American. And she looks very staid here, but she's a pretty wild girl. <laughs> Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, a very charming gentleman who's just come up from the South and is about to go back to Fort Lauderdale and Miami uh, to lecture to professors. It's very bad, sir. Bennett Surf, I'm sorry. I have a special pleasure in introducing our panel moderator tonight because he's just been passing out cigars. Uh, he's the father of a newly born little baby, and he's our nomination for Father of the Year, John <laughs> Charles Davis. All those wonderful nurses at the Harkness Pavilion up at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital assured me that Mrs. Daly and John Warren could look in tonight. And John Warren is now exactly six days and five minutes old, so it's time he learned something about television, I think. <laughs> and to celebrate this happy event panel, I'm going to tell you now that we're going to depart from our usual custom and allow you to put on your blindfolds for, to meet our first challenger. Gives you some idea of what fun we're going to have in the next half hour. Things will be new and different around here. And we'll also have a famous mystery challenger before our panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word. <laughs> right now, panel, are those uh, blindfolds all in place? In that event, will our first challenger enter and sign in, please? Out trying to throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> now, may I ask if you're familiar with our scorekeeping system? In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> and now, panel, we can tell you that our guest is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Well, there was uh, uh, so much sound coming in, as Buddy said. Is there more than one person present as uh, a contestant? Yep. Are, uh, have your uh, names or pictures been in the paper recently? Yep. Would they be in the theatrical section of the papers? Yep. Are you appearing in uh, New York? Yep. Are you appearing in a play in New York? Yep. Are you four? Yep. Huh. Are you the four funniest men that have ever crossed the water to America? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You are the most dazzling performers I have ever seen, and I adore you, if you are the four men from beyond the fringe. Let's try to get you. Well, 
<laughs> very long for that one, didn't we? And now, if, if I may have the pleasure, next to me, Alan Bennett, and behind Alan, uh, I believe, is Mr. Cook, right? right yes. Mr. Cook and Mr. Moore, Dudley Moore, and uh, then I think we have uh, Dr. Jonathan Miller. Right, Doctor? And these are indeed, I think, the four funniest people that we have had the joy of receiving in New York. Uh, I don't think uh. I've ever seen such a collection of magnificent notices on an opening in New York uh, in the last few years. I, I know you haven't, Arlene. It's one of those cases where you have to be there to see how really hilarious these four gentlemen are. I would like very much to have Dr. Jonathan Miller now go into his Shakespeare routine and die. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the wonderful thing. Dr. Miller is a doctor of medicine and still a practicing doctor, specializes in neurology and... Uh, well, I will have eventually. When, when, when you get back, and uh, I believe... Uh, if memory serves me right, that uh, you taught at, at uh, Magdalen yeah, and, and yeah. at Exeter at Oxford. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in uh, Peter's case, you have been in the theater, have you not? Or yes, I've written for it. Written for the yes. theater a good deal. And then uh, Dudley Moore is a musician. Yes. And uh, out of these four wonderful people have come uh, a great and uh, happy uh, occasion for these troubled times. Pure, wonderful laughter on topical subjects brilliant imagination and great wit. I'm sorry we didn't I'm sorry. confuse I'm those ashamed. characters we over there. We being rather cunning, I have <laughs> <laughs> oh, never been tried before, I have to say, yep. I thought that absolutely fooled everybody. Have you been on What's My Line in no. England? No, 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 no. but we've no. seen it. They wouldn't get you so fast over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well Doc, as long as you're here, could you take a look at my throat sure. over here? <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, I must mm -hmm. say this. But, uh, Buddy, I think that uh, Dr. Miller would be great for you because I think you're going to specialize in psychiatry, are you not, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I need a connection. Me being an upholsterer, I can take care of the couch. I know. Jonathan, <laughs> while, while, you're, while you're over here, I understand there's another company filling in for you in London. Is yes, that correct? Yes, yes, yes. So yes, you're playing in two cities at the same time. Are they know, also professional Freddy, men? Oh, really? Is are they are they professional men as you are, doctors? Um, so no, they're not. Um, um, uh, I don't know what they are. They're, they're, <laughs> are they they're stuck in it. Uh, yeah, they're yeah, they're stuck in it. Yeah, yeah, they're prisoners. Professional <laughs> prisoners. <laughs> well, Alan, Peter, Jonathan, and Dudley, thank you very much. I know that this is a night off for you, and uh, it's good of you to have given us a big chunk of it to appear on What's My Line. We hope Beyond the Fringe keeps you with us for a long, long time because you're great. Great neighbors and visitors. And Thank you very much. Good to see you all. Well, now let's meet our next challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Corrine? William, right? <laughs> Is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Williams? I'm Mrs. I'm a widow. Mrs. Williams, you're a widow. We'll be sorry to hear that. Where are you from? Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. Nice to have a Texan with us. Mrs. Williams, may I present our panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? Uh, Mrs. Williams, do you know our scorekeeping system? Yes. All right. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Williams is self-employed, deals in a service. And uh, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. Mrs. Williams, in Fort Worth is American Airlines, uh, home base and the school for stewardesses. May I assume you have nothing whatever to do with that airline and the school? May I assume that mm -hmm. I have nothing to do means, you yes, have, you may assume. I may assume that. <laughs> do you do your, perform your service in the city of Fort Worth? Or in or thereabouts? I could, but I haven't. 
I would say that's a fair answer, Bennett, so we'll give you a qualified yes. Qualified yes. Mm -hmm. Is the service that you perform done for human beings, Mrs. Williams? Yes. Is it done for adults? Yes. For both men and women? Yes. Uh, when you perform this service, do you come into physical contact with these people? No. One down and nine to go, Miss mm -hmm. Francis. Mrs. Williams, you look very glamorous tonight. Uh, is that to lead us astray a little bit? Uh, is it unlikely that we would think of you looking the way you do now for the job that you hold? Uh, Miss Francis, do you mean by clothing or what? Well, I mean, uh, uh, in the... Well, I think, I think actually what Arlene is asking, Mrs. Williams, is that would you be wearing a dinner dress and, and a, what is it they call, not a shawl, but a... Uh, stole. Stole. A stole no. and, and we'd be wearing diamonds. And you would not. You look very glamorous, too. Uh, do you work uh, indoors? Did you, say, did you ask, would you be wearing what you are when you do your work? Was that your question? Are you trying to fix it for me to have a no, John? No, you just no, a father? Just, uh, Arlene just wanted to know if that was misleading. I, That's exactly right. Thank you, Dorothy. I meant, were, was, is it possible that Mrs. Williams looks at this moment would mislead us a little bit about the job that she does. Well, yes, does. we would have to agree. On that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> is it a job that men do as well as women, Mrs. Yes. Williams? Uh, do you work indoors? At times. Is a certain amount of dexterity needed in your work? Yes. Is a certain amount of strength needed in your work? Yes. Do people watch you when you perform your yes. service? Would it be in the realm of entertainment in any way? Yes. Would you have anything to do with uh, the performing arts? Arts? The performing <laughs> arts. I think in the context of performing arts, we would have to say no. no. That's yeah. right. Two down and eight to go, <laughs> Mr. Hackett. Uh, then the performing that you do, would that come in the realm of sports? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> does this hmm, take some kind of uh, instrument or apparatus, uh, and do you use an instrument or apparatus to help you in your performance of this? I wouldn't call it an instrument. Well, it's small. Well, suppose it was a rope. I mean, I would mean it that way. Uh. In case you wanted to hang yourself. No. No. <laughs> Well, this is a difficult issue here because I good, assume good. that what you're asking here is, <laughs> is there some contrivance or tool or uh, Anything aid? outside of your God-given assets. <laughs> you do, yeah. Now, this uh, other substance that you use, you son of a gun, could that be... Oh, excuse me, Joey. Uh, <laughs> Would that be a pliable object? Say that again, please. Would it be a pliable object? That By which you pliable. mean something that the hands could yeah, bend? Yeah, as no. opposed to a rigid no. object. No. It is not no, pliable. No, I, I don't think we can describe the accoutrements necessary <laughs> as pliable. Oh, all you. right. Now, you say you work indoors and out yes, sometimes? Yes. Uh, do you have anything to do with a sport that can be played indoors yes. and out? Mm -hmm. Is a ball used in connection with the sport? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Williams, there's a lot of livestock down in Fort Worth. Are there any <laughs> live animals participate at any time in the sport in which you also yes. participate? Would there be horses? Sometimes. Would it possibly, would you possibly ever appear in a rodeo? I have. <laughs> uh, do you do something with the uh, horses that are not quite tame? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, uh, Partly. A bareback rider or somebody who Not trains wild rider. horses? Or? No, I was going to say, I think, Bennett, you, you have uh, identified the basic occupation, perhaps, but let's, let's see if you can, for fun, figure out what it is that Mrs. Williams does. For it's something to do with horses. Yeah. Okay. You don't ride wild, you don't wild, wild I'm not a bear ride bronco. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Bennett. Why, ride, ride, wild, bull, ride, 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 yeah. ride, ride, not ride, only that, but the Confusion and the Flappensteimer, <laughs> too, yes, indeed. And on Wednesdays, we do it with our heads standing on our hands, that's right. Now, you're not one of these girls who stands in one of these enclosures, and as the horse breaks out, you ride it and buck, bucking bronco. Oh, question. Riding bucking bronco. Bronco bucking. Right. Actually, we're going to throw all the guys. I think Bennett has to be given credit. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Actually, <coughs> rock busting is what <coughs> you were thinking of. That's a pliable object. The a horse rock? is pliable. The saddle isn't. You asked me about the prop. Oh, uh, yes. They don't mm. give. Saddle for a little bit. They give it all, do they? Yeah. But you're, you're um, not letting me finish. It's bronc buster and also steer wrestler. Mrs. Williams does. I'm the only lady steer wrestler Only in the steer, world. steer, steer. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. twist their necks on the ground and get the them Rodeo down. Mm -hmm. They gave me so much to eat in Baton Rouge, I haven't recovered yet. <laughs> and actually, uh, Mrs. Williams comes to us from the famous Axar Ben. You know, the, in, uh, in Omaha, where they have the a rodeo, and then it finishes up in a great ball, which is the it, great I social... I was at Calgary this year in Cheyenne and quite a few major ah. rodeos, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Well, this is yeah. a, a most interesting occupation thank for you. a lovely young lady, and thank, thank you. you for sharing it with us, and what's my life? Nice to see you. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which our panel, as you all know, is blindfolded. Hey, buddy, front and center. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, they are. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? panel. case of the mystery guest, a different form of questioning. We begin uh, with one question at a time, and we move clockwise, and I think we ought to begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, do you sing professionally? Yes. Are you appearing in your... Uh, 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 what? Mr. Sir. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was a little uh, anxious. Have you ever sung in a show the music of which was composed by Fritz Lowe. Yes. Miss Francis? Are you appearing in a show at the present time, a musical? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Hackett. Did you close last night in New York? <laughs> no, I didn't. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Did you ever live in Texas? No, I haven't. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Was the show in which you appeared Camelot? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, You're not Robert Goulet, are you? No. <laughs> yes, I am. Is it a Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I was so angry that you got it so quickly. I oh, had to say I thought you no. said no. I know. We it. did. That's all right. <laughs> His next <laughs> guess would have been Richard Burton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's nice, I must say, and I think it's a distinguished moment for all of us to savor. Sir Lancelot is with us tonight. Yes, indeed. And I, don't know, too. I don't know how many of you at home or here in the theater had the opportunity or will have the opportunity it's too bad you'd miss robert now to see camelot but it was a joy to the eye and a joy to the ear and a thoroughly delightful and wonderful evening of the theater one of the things it did uh, was to launch a young man of very fine talents and, and uh, artistry on a what i know is going to be a long and successful career and i'm talking about you robert but have a wonderful voice and a great presence i think and on the stage too i wonder if mr goulet remembers that opening night at the o'keefe theater in toronto when it ran till about two o'clock in the morning well it did theater. not it closed at 11 45 i certainly do remember it yes. <laughs> <laughs> well and you're going into the persian room here in the plaza yes, this week wednesday evening is that the first time in the uh, first time i've done any club work yeah, i, I was in work. washington for the last two weeks i opened up the showroom and uh, sort of broke in the act or the presentation and it uh it was rather frightening at first, but I think I'm going to enjoy it. Well, that's what I wanted to get at, Bob, because you know, you've appeared before tens of thousands of people on the stage, but it, doing this different thing is... is it's, uh, it's so different child. being on the stage, because in, in a club, it seems that you must, uh, you must be yourself and, and uh, prove yourself. On the stage, somehow, you can, you can hide behind uh, somebody else, Julie Andrews' skirts or Richard Burton's or whomever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that this new career is going to be successful as... as uh, the one which launched so well in Camelot. And thanks a lot for Thank coming you to join much. us and what's my life. Good to see you.
Can't do anything else but tell you, panel, that you have done magnificently so far tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Jack. Luzato. Right, sir. Luzato, where are you from, sir? From France. From the Bronx. That makes you a neighbor from New York, so I know these folks are all familiar to you. May I present the panel? Luzato. Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score, sir? I do. Good. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. I can tell you that Mr. Lozato is salaried, deals in a service, but there is also a, what we would call a product, I think, very closely identified. Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Hackett. God bless you. That's God not a bless question. God bless you. That was Bennett Surf sneezing. The house Thank did you. not fall in. Thank you. Um, the service that you perform, does it reach many people? I hope so. Is it something that you make? Yes. Uh, this product that you make, is this owned by you? It's, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Is the product that you is make owned by you? Is the product that you make you? owned by you? Um, before I sell it. Before you sell it? Yes. Does it have a trade name? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, now, Mr. Lozato, to get to this product, uh, could I hold it in my hand? Yes. If I walked down Fifth Avenue, would it be conspicuous? Not unless you made it so. <laughs> no, I would think it would not be conspicuous. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Lozato, might this product be worn by somebody? No. <clears throat> Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is the product equally useful for both men and women? Yes. Is it a product that we find in the home? Yes. Would it ever be, would it be found in a special room of the home more no. than another? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Hackett. Is uh, this something to eat? Something to eat? No. Yeah. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. For a goat? <laughs> <laughs> a goat might, yes, but uh, that is such a varied diet, it would take everything in. Dorothy? Well, now, since this is found anywhere in the home, could it be found in an office or outside the home, too? Yes. Yeah. Uh, does it in any way make people better off or happier? That's a moot point. It could be considered, I think, when uh, the purpose is to use its soul to make people happier. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a pretty special purpose, I gather. No, I wouldn't say that. I th actually, we're, we're going to run out of time, and I want a second to, to get into it. Mr. Lozato con makes, constructs, designs, develops crossword puzzles, which is oh. why I said a matter of speaking with you. And the puzzles have appeared. I'm sure we've all done them because they appear in the Times, the Herald oh, Tribune, them. magazines, books. You eat them. Yeah. Well, now there we are. We gave a wrong answer without meaning to. You do those Lizana. Sunday Times ones, Mr. Lozano? Sometimes. Sunday Times magazines. Yes. My wife's been I even hours made on. one for your wife once. Did you? Mm -hmm. Well, now I can just say one thing about those that you make for the Sunday Times. They're tough, sir. Yeah, they're supposed yes, to be. Are. Thanks very much for being our guest on What's Thank My you. Life. Thank you. Well, very well tonight, panel. On a happy note, it is indeed. I say good night, Miss Francis. Good night, dear John. Good night, buddy. Happy Philadelphia. Thank you very much. Good night, guys. Good night, buddy. Come again. Good night, Bennett. John, I hope you'll have to give us a cigar once a year for the next ten years. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, John. Thank you, Bennett. I hope so, too. And if I may, good night, Virginia and John Warren. <laughs> and thanks for being with us on What's My Life? What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Johnny Olsen speaking.